Breaking tonight, three new polls showing big moves in the Republican field. And for the first time in three months, one national poll showing a new man on top. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Brand new polling out tonight from Investors Business Daily has Dr. Ben Carson in first place at 24% in a national survey. Only the second time Carson has ever been on top and the first time someone has bested Donald Trump since early July. A dive by NBC News and The Wall Street Journal into New Hampshire also shows an increasingly competitive field. Trump remains in first place, but Carly Fiorina has surged 10 points, taken second place in what is now a much tighter lineup. And Jeb Bush is in third there, neck and neck with Senator Rubio. In Iowa, the Republicans there tell the same story, a major tightening between the top tier contenders. Trump holds on to his lead, but it narrows with a number of candidates gaining new Hawkeye state support since September. Again, the latest surge, the largest surge, is from Fiorina, but you can see Carson is still in second position there, five points behind Trump in Iowa. We have two Republican presidential candidates here tonight, including Carly Fiorina, the woman now surging, and Senator Marco Rubio, who is also showing new strength. But we begin tonight with Fox News Digital Politics editor Chris Steyerwalt and host of Media Buzz here on Fox, Howie Kurtz. Good to see you both. So Hi. Investors Business Daily, I always go by Dana Blanton, who runs our polling division. She tells us whether Lies. this is a legitimate poll or not, not a legitimate poll. She says this one is okay. We can cite it. Um, this is the first time we've seen Trump in anything but the top position in months. What do you make of it? Well, look, he came in when Donald Trump came into the race. Uh, he people said he's not for real. This isn't going to work. Boom. He shoots up the top. He stays stable. Ben Carson gets sort of drowned out. Uh, now, I'm sure that for many in the Republican establishment, they would prefer that the person surging in this poll was not Ben Carson because he's not exactly their idea. But it, here's what it demonstrates. Outsider year. Ben Carson has got uh, an, a momentum and an energy to this campaign that defies so much of what has been defined and what has been written about what we are supposed to see, mm -hmm. what is supposed to happen. And, you know, it's sort of to this point where you have to say, let's see where this goes. What has happened, Howie, do you think, for Trump? He's still obviously the front runner in every other poll. Um, but he had... 30.5% on September 19th. He had 30% in the national polling, and now he's fallen considerably in this poll. What do you make of it? I think that national poll may be a bit of an outlier, but no question the race is tightening. There was simply no way that Donald Trump was going to be able to continue to dominate every poll and every minute of every campaign conversation every day. And so what's happened is that some of the novelty factor may have worn off with Trump. Cable news no longer goes live every time he clears his throat. And so then you have Carly Fiorina and Ben Carson and the only practicing uh, card-carrying politician in the bunch, Marco Rubio, now grabbing more of the media oxygen, becoming better known, but also that means they're going to be getting tougher skills. Scrutiny. By the way, Chris, with all due respect to Dana, um, they only polled in this poll three, uh, in this poll 377 registered voters. They were Republicans or, or registered independents who lean Republican. Is that enough? Uh, I mean, it's a poll. It's a data point. As Howie points out, this could be an outlier. This could be a prediction of things to come. But when we couple it with other national polls, when we couple it with what you just showed in New Hampshire, what you showed in Iowa, this race is shifting. So after a long period of stasis in which it was Trump and everybody else, we are starting to see the stratification. We are starting to see the diminution of Trump. We are starting to see this emerge. So what does Where Trump do at this point? What does he do? Because he has almost 100 percent name recognition. I mean, and find right. me a person who doesn't know Donald Trump. He did flip it once. At the beginning, when he came in the race, he was 60-30. He was, the Republicans said, we don't like him 60%. 30% said, we think he's okay. He flipped it. It was astonishing. Over time, he's given a lot, not a lot, but he's given a substantial amount of that back. Now, whether or not he can, he has two choices. He's either going to go back into reruns. He'll start a feud. He'll go on Twitter. He'll say this, that, the other thing. He'll go crazy and hope that he can get more attention, more media coverage of the media coverage. Or... He's going to keep doing what he's what he started to do, what he's shown some signs of doing. Build out organization, reach into his own pocket, spend the money that it will take to build a real campaign mm -hmm. so that when he suffers the fall to earth, that every candidate suffers, when he when it hurts, that he'll be there to bounce back like Marco Rubio, like other candidates have done that have gone through lean times, but have had the organization and the fortitude well, to get back. What do you make, Howie, of the fact that, OK, Car Carly Fiorina is quote surging, but she's at 8 percent, right? So, I mean, it's like Trump has got, what, triple her numbers in Iowa. So it's nice to surge, but it's 
better if you can have triple the numbers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so it's like, well, how does she translate her surge into actual winning? Well, considering where she started from, where she was an asterisk in this race and couldn't even get into the first primetime debate, I mean, she has made tremendous progress. But let's not lose sight of the fact that not only is Trump still on top, except in that one poll, but that what counts here are the state-by-state -state polls. And so he, even if he's got a five-point lead in Iowa and New Hampshire, if Donald Trump wins those first two states, there will be an explosion, which will mean he'll be very hard to catch. And one last point, and that is a lot of the skeptics and Trump disparagers say, He's recently said, well, you know, if my poll numbers collapse, you know, I'll go back to my business. And they're saying, aha, he was never serious. He's not in it for the long haul. All he's doing is being candid. Other yeah, candidates right. will never say that right. until they're about to get out of the race. He says, if, he if I'm defeated, support, I'll admit defeat and I'll get out. I'm I'm toast, like these other I'll people out, yeah. literally polling at zero and refuse to get out. <laughs> they're polling at zero. Zero. <laughs> well, let me ask you before I let you go. So this is important, Steyerwell. Do you agree mm -hmm. with Howie on that? Because well, we always look at the national polling, but it really comes down to First Iowa, then New Hampshire, then South Carolina. Can you win the Republican nomination if you don't win one of those? No, you have to win an early state. You there's, do. There's, you do. You have, so you got February and then March. March is every is a goat roping. Anything can happen in March. It's mm -hmm. crazy. You got early primaries, then you got a, the SEC primary. You got Super Duper Tuesday. March is crazy. But February is when it's clear open field running. You've got three big ones. You go Iowa. You go New Hampshire. You go South Carolina. If you don't have a win in one of those states, you do not have a calling card to get into the next round because this will end up being a two or maybe three, but probably two person race going down the stretch. If you don't have a February win, you ain't showing up in March. When are we going to know, Starwell? When are we going to know? Like, by Easter, will we know? Well, what if, we, <laughs> what if there was a debate? What if we could have the Fox News Channel do a debate in, like, I don't know, late January, let's say, right before the Iowa caucuses? That might be elucidating. It's exciting. We have not yet begun to get those questions together, but that sounded like a hint. I think I'm getting a call tomorrow. Great to see you both. Bye. Thank you, there, Megan. Well, as Carly Fiorina has climbed in these polls, she's getting a lot more scrutiny. Wait until you see what we just saw on another channel. And tonight, we will ask her about a controversial new report that goes right to the heart of her reputation. Plus, breaking news tonight on the Russian military buildup in the Middle East, with new evidence that Russian soldiers and heavy art artillery now streaming into Syria. Colonel Tony, Tony Schaefer and Pete Hegseth are next on that. And then Florida Senator and presidential candidate Marco Rubio will explain why he thinks the U.S. could be heading for a second Cold War with Russia and whether a popular TV show just turned up the pressure on President Obama's Mideast policy.